Hello Physical Science and welcome to Moodle. Again, we are going to have all our class lectures online. Why? Because we can do so much more stuff in the classroom. No one likes taking notes, which is why the notes are provided for you and then you can have your lectures here at home. Or you can watch them on your phone. You can watch them anywhere you have the internet. For our very first lecture, we're going to talk about classifying matter. This is something you probably should have done in elementary and or junior high. It's a very basic and simple concept. So, let's begin. There are two main things in the universe. There's matter and there's energy. So, what is matter? Matter is anything that takes up space and, or sorry, yeah, it takes up space and has volume. That's a very broad, kind of weird definition, but that's a definition for matter. Energy is, well, it's pure energy. So again, you're either energy or you're matter. And we're going to look at matter. Just examples for energy, even though we're really not going to go over that. Energy is like heat. Heat is pure energy. Light is energy. Sound is energy. Did you know you could heat a cup of coffee using nothing but sound? It would take a very, very, very long time, but it is possible. So, classifying matter. Here's a little flow chart that is very, very, very useful that I'll go over real quick, and then we're going to talk about these in more detail in a little bit. So first we have matter. Matter can be broken up into either mixtures or can be broken up into pure substances. Now these can be broken up into two categories. For example, mixtures can either be a heterogeneous mixture or a homogeneous mixture. And you'll see at the very end that these can be divided up too. A pure substance can either be an element or a compound. So again, matter is either a pure substance or a mixture. Now let's go over each of those in a little bit more detail. So let's start with a pure substance. A pure substance is matter which has exactly the same composition. Basically, it's made up of one type of thing. The entire substance is exactly one type of thing. So that could be, for example, a bar of gold. Every single piece, every single atom on this thing is pure gold. It's nothing else. It's only gold. This is water. No matter how much there is, it's all water. There's there's nothing else on there. It's only water. I don't know if that you guys on your screen just saw something that popped up right here, but that's why I had that little weird look on my face. Carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is a gas. It's made up of purely carbon and oxygen and nothing else. So again, we have pure water, carbon dioxide, gold, nitrogen. These are just four examples. There's so many more. Okay, Basically, every single element off the periodic table is a pure substance. And there's many different compounds you can put together to have a pure substance. What's important is that every amount of the substance behaves exactly the same because the substance is fixed. Okay, There's no other elements, or I shouldn't say that. There's no other substances. So basically, if you take a teaspoon of water, it, it, it behaves exactly the same way as a gallon of water. There's no difference, really, besides the amount. If you take a little piece of gold and a very large and a very large piece of gold, guess what? They both conduct electricity. They both have a high density. Okay? They behave exactly the same. So that's a pure substance. It's made up of exactly the same composition. Now, there's two types of pure substances. There's L as we saw earlier. There's elements and there's compounds. Let's go over elements. An element is a substance that cannot be broken down into a simpler substance. It's basically the smallest thing you can get. It's an atom. The smallest you can ever go for an element is an atom. And you should definitely have talked about atoms somewhere in school prior to ninth grade. So there are, ooh, I think about 118 different elements out there right now. Um, it's constantly changing. We keep... Now, I wouldn't say the word discovering new elements because nature only makes elements 1 through 92 for the most part. After element 92, uranium, everything else is man-made. Humans actually in a laboratory make those elements. So I want to say discover elements, but we haven't made any new elements. But there's like about there's roughly 118 of them. So if you look at a periodic table of elements, in fact, if I look that up real quick, do 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 do. 
There we go. Eating up time. Probably shouldn't have done this, but I don't care. Direct table. Let's look at an image real quick. Mr. Osborne, I've seen a product table before. Good, I'm glad you have. You're really going to see one here shortly in the next unit. View image. I don't think it's going to shoot. Oh, there it goes. Okay, good. So this one, oh, it does have 118. Ooh, I was on it. So all these are different elements. Okay, They are a pure substance if it's just by itself. So we had an example, carbon, gold, aluminum. Uh, like aluminum foil is a pure element. Copper, copper pipes, for example. Sodium, potassium, some common oxygen that's in the air. Okay, those are all elements. Those are pure substances. A compound is when you take two or more elements and you chemically combine them. Now, again, you cannot separate them. Once they are combined, they cannot be separated physically. What I mean by that is you just can't take them and pull them apart. Can't do that. You can do another chemical reaction to break them apart, but a compound is a substance that's made from two or more elements chemically combined. They cannot be physically removed. So, for example, water is made up of hydrogen and oxygen. It's made up of two different elements, hydrogen and oxygen. Specifically, it's made up of two hydrogens and one oxygen. Every single piece of water, every drop of water, every molecule of water is exactly the same. Every single piece is two hydrogens and one oxygen. Carbon dioxide is exactly one piece of carbon and two oxygens. Salt, table salt, sodium chloride. Each one is one sodium and one chlorine. Now, do compounds only have two elements? No, because, it, again, it says it can be more than that. So, for example, baking soda. Here we go. Baking soda, which, again, every little piece looks at, whoa, that really zoomed in there. Looks exactly the same. Can I move over? No, I can't move over. Looks exactly the same, and it behaves the same. Because these are, I think, four different elements chemically combined. It's sodium, hydrogen, carbon, and oxygen. Four different elements chemically combined. So this is a, again, this is a pure substance, but it's called a compound because it's made up of more than one type of element. So easy, easy way to remember this. Pure substances, elements, compounds. What's the difference? Elements are one element, and a compound is two or more elements put together. Mixtures. A mixture is when there are two or more substances that are mixed together physically. This is when you can physically put them together. For example, a salad. So we just threw on all these different types of vegetables, or uh, well, tomatoes or fruit, and you physically combine them. That's a mixture. Sugar water. Now, a lot of people get this confused because it all looks the same. It looks like a pure substance, and it's not. Just because sugar dissolves, doesn't mean that's chemi like a chemical reaction. It's not. It's a physical reaction. So sugar water is a mixture. It's sugar and water physically combined. Uh, milk, same way. Air. Okay, Air is a mixture. Our air has all sorts of different gases that are just mixed together. There's about 70... Oh, wow. How do I not remember my numbers? I do. 70% nitrogen. Oh, it says here, 78% nitrogen, sorry, 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen. So I, some people don't know this, but actually most of the air we breathe is nitrogen, but it's the oxygen we really need. But too much oxygen can kill us. So air is a mixture because it has 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, 1% other, some textbooks say 2% other, you know, the numbers vary slightly. But again, these are all mixtures. They are two or more substances physically just mixed together. And the properties of mixtures can vary because the substances that make up the mixtures are not fixed. For example, if I take a small piece of the salad, if I take it right here, notice I don't get any tomato. If I take some right here, 
uh, bar here. I get plenty of tomato, not much radish, and no avocados. So again, every part is not necessarily exactly the same. If you put a bunch of sand in water, you'll notice that the top part's mostly just water, a little bit of sand, maybe fl little pieces floating here and there, and the majority of the sand is at the bottom of the glass of water. So the whole thing is not the same throughout. Same is actually true for air. Two types of mixtures. So again, just like pure substances had two types, elements and compounds, mixtures have two types. So a mixture can either be a homogeneous or it can be heterogeneous. Homogeneous means it is evenly distributed and it's hard to tell one substance apart from the other. So for example, sugar water. Uh, it, ooh, there's a mistake on here. I don't think pudding should be a homogeneous mixture, but we'll talk about why here in a little bit. Anyways, homogeneous. Actually, it, it might. We'll, we'll, okay, we'll, we'll say it is. Sugar water. Again, when you physically combine sugar and water or you put salt in water, it all looks exactly the same. You can't see the different layers. So that's called homogeneous. The same is pretty true for pudding. Um, another great example of this is steel. So steel is not, yeah, it's not the picture I want. There it is. Steel is not on the periodic table. It's not an element. Steel is actually carbon and iron put together. Okay, And they're not chemically combined. They are physically combined. So steel is a homogeneous mixture. You can't really see the different parts of the carbon and the iron. They all look one in the same. So homogeneous mixtures kind of look like pure substances, but they're not. They are not. So again, homogeneous, the prefix homo means same. So same, the whole thing looks exactly the same. Hemo homogeneous mixtures often come as solutions. So when it's a liquid, we call that a solution. And again, you have one substance that dissolves, that's called the sol. sorry, one substance that gets dissolved, that's called the solute, and one substance that does the dissolving is called the solvent. So for example, water is the solvent because it does the dissolving. Sugar or salt is a solute. It gets dissolved. So again, which is when one substance dissolves, called the solute, in another substance called a solvent. So whatever gets dissolved is called a solute. Whatever does the dissolving is a solvent. So homogeneous, everything looks the same. Heterogeneous, the prefix hetero means different. So with these, these are mixtures that are easy to distinguish from one another. For the most part, we'll talk about one example where it's not. A pizza, you can easily see all the different toppings for this pizza. Sand, you can see all the different things that are in sand. Not all pieces of sand look exactly the same. You can see the difference. If you put sand in water, you can see the layers of that. Okay, That is a heterogeneous mixture. It's when you take pure substances and you can easily see all the different layers. Many times, these create what are called suspensions. Again, a suspension is when if you put sand in water, you get a layer of the sand at the bottom and the water is up on top. A colloid. So here's where it gets a little tricky. A colloid is a mixture that looks homogeneous. It looks homogeneous, like milk or orange juice. It looks homogeneous. However, it's not. Why not is a big question. So for a colloid, a colloid is a homo is a, sorry, a heterogeneous mixture that looks homogeneous, but here's how to know. If you cannot shine light through it, it's a colloid. That means it's going to be heterogeneous. So if you take a glass of sugar water, you can put a flat like a little laser light or a flashlight, and the light goes right through it. If you take a glass of milk and you put a laser light through it or a flashlight, that light will not go all the way through. That means it's a colloid, which makes it heterogeneous. So again, 
colloids look homogeneous. Milk looks the same throughout the whole glass. Oh, it looks like a glass of milk. Okay, all the milk looks exactly the same, but it's not because light cannot shine all the way through it. And that's the trick you have to use. So if I revise that little flow chart we had at the beginning, we have matter. Matter is divided into pure substances and mixtures. Pure substances are either elements or compound. An element is basically one type of element. A compound is two or more elements chemically combined. Mixtures. Heterogeneous, homogeneous. Homogeneous mixtures look exactly the same no matter how much there is. Heterogeneous mixtures, you can easily see the different parts of it. Heterogeneous create suspensions, and they create colloids, which again, colloids look homogeneous, but if you can't shine light through it, then it's a colloid, which means it's heterogeneous. Homogeneous create solutions when they're liquids, a solution. And that's it. Uh, going on a little long, about 16 minutes, a lot longer than I thought, but this is a very, very lengthy topic. Most other topics will not take nearly as much time to watch. Thank you.